Hey guys, we are back in it. And by in it, I mean Python. Uh, sorry, I just spoke up a little bit. Uh, I mean Python functions, functions. So, um, as you can see, I already started uh, this, and we're just going to be resetting it as I go. So, uh, it looks like we are going to be doing a tax and a tip function here. So, um, take a look at it. See, you know, def tax takes a parameter, returns a parameter. Same thing with tip. And then we do some stuff with it. You know, let's get going. All right. So, go ahead and create a function called spam. So, def spam that prints the string eggs. Uh, Okay, to the console, don't forget to include a comma of your choice in the triple quotes. Uh, this is a comment. Yeah, let's see if that works. Cool, so uh, just a basic function that we call spam, it prints eggs. That's it. All right, so we've set up a function called square, so they've already set this up. Call it on number on line 10 call it on the number 10 print squares all right so we're calling square on the number 10 on line 9 and 10 needs to be in parentheses it says I'm not sure why Remember we call spam on previous election, which do the same here with square. I put in, oh, parentheses. I don't know why I put in quotations. Okay, so just showing us how to call the function here. Pretty standard stuff. All right, check out the function in the editor power. It should take two arguments, a base and an exponent, and raise it to the power. So replace the f the blanks with the appropriate stuff. So we have two parameters. We can already see they're named because we use them in the actual function. So we have base and we have exponent. And base exponent result. So we want to call power with a base of 37. Wait. Call power with, with a base and exponent base of 37 and power 4. So the base is 37 and the exponent is 4. There we go. And that's looking like 1.87 million is the answer. But uh, So we're just putting in parameters and then we're calling the function again. And that's about it. So alright, what are we doing here? Let's look at the two functions in the editor. One good turn, which adds one to the number, and deserves another, which adds two. Change the body, it deserves another, so that always adds two of the output of one good turn. So, just a little bit of math. For one good turn, uh, to the output of one good turn. So, so it always adds two to the output. that's what they want us to do it looks like your deserves another function returns all right so deserves another let's look at the two functions it takes an adds two change the body it deserves another so that always adds two to the output of one good turn oh whoops all right so we're going to say we need to return uh we need to return one good turn. Turn. So we're going to call this function in this function, and we're going to input the parameter n plus 2. There we go. So um, just to go over this real quick, we're saying these are two separate functions, and this our parameter n we're inserting into here. We're calling it from here, say do all this, and then add 2 to it, basically. Alright, 
first def function called the cube, so we got def cube. Takes an argument, oops, def cube takes an argument number. Make that function return the cube of a number, return number times times number. Um, the de if I remember correctly, the double asterisk means to the power of, so three to the power of, actually no, that's not right, two, 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 cube is there, there we go, three. Uh, all right, make that function return the cube of the number, to find a section, sec a second function called by three, so def by underscore three. It's gonna take an argument called number again. And if, we're gonna have this statement, if number, is divisible three by three. Should call cube number, otherwise by three return false. If number, all right, so I think what they're saying is if this doesn't have any, so if our number, when we divide by three, doesn't have a remainder, so mod three, um, we want to call cube and we'll put in our number else make sure your indents are correct as well else return false don't forget if else it is. Damn it. did you remember return result else I right, return cube number there we go okay so if this number is divisible by three, mod three, and meaning there's no there's no remainder, we are going to call cube number on it. All right. Uh, so this is asking us to print the square root of twenty twenty five. Let's see what happens. Uh, so. We're getting an error uh, because it looks like we probably have to import a library. Which is what's going on here? So import. So type in uh, import math. I'm going to there. Insert dot math before square root. So we're going to say uh, math dot square root. We're going to say take this square root function from the math library, so you know what to do now. So you don't get the same error that you've been getting. And bam. So we get 5.0. And it works now. So uh, let's only import the square root function from math this time. So from math, import sqrt. We're saying the only function we want to import is the square root function from the math library. Um, you'd probably do this if you only really needed one thing and you don't want it have to run through it. It's probably a speed thing. Um, it probably goes quicker like right now you don't even worry about things speeding like the speed of processes and you know data and whatnot but down the road if you're having a million hits a day on a website stuff like that matters. Alright uh, anyhow so use the from module from module import math so this is going to nope your code looks a bit off oh from math whoops from math import all right so what this is doing is it's going to import it's a universal importer so basically saying from our math li library import absolutely everything they can find all right so so we import math, import the math module. I'm not sure how it's different from importing the math, but it might have said just import math, then import from from math, import everything. So um, everything equals direct on math. Let's see what's going on here, basically. So this shows us all the functions when we call the directory. So this says, oh, this is what's going on in here.
Okay. Not not too too bad. Um, you get to see like why why this could be helpful is although you'd probably just look at the documentation, but look square root, tan, truncate, log, you know, a cosine, a tan. So stuff if you're trying to figure out what they name without going online. So, oops. All right. So what do you think of the code in the editor? Let's see here. So we have biggest number. The all arguments. So print max. All right. So what I think this does, if I remember correctly, and we'll find out next slide, is when you put an asterisk, it means that it can take more than one parameter. So this probably will run do this whole code for all the code without writing a, a loop for it but we'll, we'll see what's going on here um, so you can see right here we have biggest number it runs through here it's going to print the max the min the absolute so yep that's what it does so it's going to run through all these numbers and then print the max of these numbers so that's a little bit off so this says basically you can supply more than one argument without doing a bunch of statements. We can just, and for this, we can just supply it and we'll give it a, a parameter, like a, uh, a function here and it'll do it itself. Which is kind of cool, you don't, you, know, you don't really see that often. All right, so uh, try out the max function in line three of the editor. You can provide any number of integers. Set the maximum to the max value of any set of numbers on line three, for example. All right, so max of max is We'll do one, three, comma, five, and then it's going to print the max of this. So it should print out five. And there it is. Same thing with min. We'll do one, min is uh, two, four, six, and it should print out two. There it goes. What a smart computer. And then we're going to have absolute, and we it wants us to do negative 42. And it should print out 42. Oh, forget! Don't forget the ABS absolute function. And there we go, 42. All right, now we need to print out the type. So we want to print. So if we want to find out what type it is for any reason, uh, we're gonna do int. So there's 42. Print a float. Let's just let's do uh, 3.3333. And then we want to print. Don't forget the type. Uh, str type of we want a string so we'll do pizza poker guy 87 and bam we should get int float string so those are our types all right so let's get back into some functions we learned a little bit about a few math math library functions if you want to call them that I'm not sure what the technical name and I guess they are functions All right, so def shut underscore down takes a single parameter s don't forget the parentheses or the colon if so if s is equal equal to yes Return shutting down. Return shut down. Return no. Return shutting. Shutting down. And you can see uh, that there's no brackets or anything. Um, just a reminder with Python is your code won't run if it's indented properly. So if this was right here, even though it looks like it's in the right order, or if, even if it was right here, it won't run. It'll, you'll just get an error because of indentation. And I've had a course in Python, and let me tell you, it's depending on your IDE, it can be a headache. So just be, be aware that this does happen quite often. So anyhow, elif s is equal equal to no return shut down aborted. else return sorry and then we can call shutdown
And we'll put in just an empty space, and it should return star. Actually, that's no fun. Let's return uh, no. Oops, double def, no good. Yeah. Hmm. Well, our code's right, but I don't know why it didn't return uh, shutting down. But yeah, we'll figure that out later, as long as we understand what's going on here. So we are going to import from math, import square root we can do it like that you could also just import the entire math library but this is probably the better way to do it and then we want to print the square root of the number one three six eight nine which is 117 okay and last but not least what are we doing here we're gonna write another function called def distance distance from zero and it's going to take one argument we'll just say num we'll say if type num equals equals int or type num equals equals float we wanted to do some stuff return abs of num else return nope There we go. Um, so you see, now we're kind of combining everything. We're saying combining a type. We're taking in our parameters. We're f saying if it's equal to this or this. We could also have done two if statements. Um, just depends on your coding style. I just happened to combine it. Uh, you could also do another if. If it's an int, return absolute num. If it's a float, return absolute num. Else, do it like that. But this is probably the best way to do it. So let's see what we're going to be doing in the next Python video. It's titled Taking a Vacay here, or Taking a Vacation. Um, looks like we'll be probably doing some sort of vacation planning with some math objects. So I will see you guys in the next Python video, and as always, anything constructive.